Welcome to a new video on my home automation open have a node red series. Recently I managed a couple of videos about PCB manufacturing and how I got uh, some of my PCBs manufactured. It's basically only two so these are the first two boards that I've designed and in those videos I mentioned that I'm going to put something together on how to design a PCB so this is what I'm going to do now and I'm using Easy EDA because it's an online tool and that actually works uh, very well for me because I usually work on a company PC where installing new software is, uh, is, is actually a bit of an issue. So I'm actually fine working in an online solution where you just need a browser and you can work from anywhere or any computer. Uh, of course that computer needs to be online. And this might not work for everyone because um, you, you know, might design something for you know, your company and you don't want the design to be on a third party uh, software, even though that you can make your projects private. Um, there must be some caveats where you probably need to turn your projects to public, but all my projects are uh, private at the moment. So I'm going to use this DHT22 uh, project as an example. So I'm opening this in ED, um, I'm opening this in Easy EDA and Obviously, the first thing that you need to do is to design your um, circuit diagram. And I'm not going to spend any time on this because you probably have drawn a circuit diagram and it's, uh, you know, this is nothing really special. You have all your components here and then you just start wiring them together and then, you know, maybe change a couple of text. So this is a, you know, 4.5K 4.5K resistor or mm, let's say you put a fuse here or, you know, ESP. 8266 so you just say, change some of the text and then you start wiring them together so it's nothing really complicated about that you probably do it on a paper as well or in fritzing the only thing which is definitely important because we are designing a PCB not only that you have to be specific about your components like this is an ASP8266 but you also have to be specific about the actual package it comes in so whenever you are trying to add something, of, of course, besides the uh, you know, standard components like uh, caps or uh, resistors, so you go to libraries and you want to search for something. So let's say ASP8266. And actually, this is one of the advantages of using Easy ADA because besides the, the library that they have, which they probably source for various places, there is also uh, a huge user-contributed library. So even if you, if you are using some weird component uh, that might not be listed in you know, some of the big sites, there is a good chance that somebody has already designed the, that component as a circuit diagram and also as a package. So I just selected on ASP8266. So it defaults the, uh, the, the search onto LCS, LCSC. But if I, I think it's going to work for this one as well. Okay, actually not. So what you need to be looking at, and that's actually quite important, is that when you pick a component, you see that, um, you see basically two diagrams. And the first one is how it appears on the circuit diagram. And the other one is the package. And you know if you are using the ASP82661 module, then it's, you know, it has a certain size and it has a 2x4 connector. So that's, this package is the, uh, the ASP8266 chip, so we are not going to use that. And this one is the ASP12F package, so if you want to use this in your project, well that's the component for you, but that's not good enough for me. So actually I should have, sorry, wrong keyboard. I should have searched for ESP826601 and now there is no in LCSC so it changed to user contributed and if I start looking at here you can see that for example this one doesn't have a package so I, I wouldn't use that because for the PCB layout I would need a package anyway but if I saw, start scrolling um, you know start selecting the next one I can see that okay well this it's just basically a box with you know four pins um, I don't really care about how it looks on the circuit diagram, but in the package you see that this is actually how the ESP looks like and uh, in, the, in, the, in the layout they have even, you know, put two different boxes, uh, one for the ESP and the other one for the memory and you can see the, the Wi-Fi antenna trace and more importantly that's the 2x4 pin 
header which uh, you know we will be using or that's the that's the one this is how you usually buy in uh, in eBay so again just keep in mind that whenever you are putting all these components in you just pick something which has the, the package that you actually want to use and if you happen to select something which doesn't have a package then you can click on the component and um, uh, later you would have a button here where you can uh, search for a package separately so I think I have done a design where I used a TTL to RS 485 or 48 yeah, 48 yeah 485 converter which I found the drawing the um, the circuit diagram drawing for that but it didn't have a package and somehow I could find the package separately and add it to it but I think for most of the components they use for example like uh, in these ones you can find an example where it, where it has the, the package along with the circuit diagram. So you put this into your drawings and then you start connecting together, you make labels and, um, and then that's it. I mean that for this one I probably spent I don't know maybe 15-20 minutes doing this. So I have a main screw terminal and an inline fuse, a MOV, um, the HRK a PM03, so that's the mains to 3.3 volt power supply. I have the ESP, the DHT266. Uh, sorry, I have the ESP, the DHT22, a pull-up resistor, and a smoothing cap. So that's all you need, and that's what you have seen in my previous video as the you know final design for this uh, temperature node. So once you have done that, you just save your design because every major step requires you to save the design first. And then now you can start designing your lay, uh, sorry, your PCB. And I do have a couple of PCBs here, but I'm just going to start from scratch again. So uh, first step is that you convert it to a PCB. So now it got converted to a PCB, and as you can see, you have all your uh, components here in the package view. If you have some elements in your design which doesn't have a package you won't be able to do this step because well you need to have a package before you start doing anything i think the most important thing is to specify your board so that's this um, pink outline is your board and i always um, uh, i'm always looking for this option in the menu but you can see the pcv information here but somewhere else you have okay set board outline so this is where you can design the the extent of your board so I know that I need my board to be 62 by 48 so um, obviously you probably have an enclosure that you have in mind where you're going to fit all your components so you just measure what is the sort size of the board which you can fit in so in my particular case it was 62 by 48 and you do apply and I've already made my first mistake because my units are in mil and I want to change them to millimeters so going back to board outline so the width is 62 by 48 so this is the envelope I have to fit all these devices in and that's fine and usually um, the next step I would do before fitting any of the components is to place any uh, mounting holes so you come, to, come here to the PCB tools and you have the holes here. So you just pick and then you know, start placing your holes. So in my example, I know that I have four holes. Okay, you escape. And you can change them that they need to be M3. So they are three millimeter wide. And, and then you start placing them. And actually, you well, the other thing I've also done is just to make the math easier is I have gone back to the set board outline and I said that the, it starts from uh, 0, 0, 0, x, y. As you can see, the, uh, whatever number you put into the width and the height, it usually changes a little bit. I guess it's some sort of design metrics or something. So I just place the board into 0, 0. So I can just pick my lines and then move them. And um, you just have to do the math on the paper, but uh, basically once you place your, your holes, you can also specify the center. So I know that, let's say it's, um, I think it's, I set to four and three and a half. 
and I know that they have to be 50 millimeters apart by 40 I think so if this is 4 then this must be 54 and then three and a half which means that I made an error or something like that but I guess you get the idea so basically you can use the center here just to align them or just to place them where they need to be exactly especially when they need to be uh, a certain distance from each other and if you are not sure about any of your measurements you can just press M and then you can start uh, you, you have a measuring tool so you can measure the distance between these two and if I just move this apart you can see that they are 50, 54 millimeters apart and you know a little bit off on the y direction okay let's just assume that uh, these uh, holes are in a good place now so I think what we can do now is we can start uh, placing our components and that's and that's pretty much up to you how you want to do it uh, I mean in this particular example I have uh, some main spar uh, elements and I also have some you know low voltage elements so I just want to put all my mains on one side and all the 3.3 volt stuff on on the other side and uh, provide enough space in between so you can just uh, click on the outlines of your components and you can just start dragging them where you want to place them if you want to place your components aligned to some grids then if you just click on the background here you, on the left you can uh, change the snap side sorry the grid size and the snap size so that's the uh, that's the grid the uh, the component snaps to when you move them I mean it's set to a really low uh, snap size so it, it appears that it's it's not snapping at all but actually it does and when you when you have a, a component selected and when you press space you can just rotate 90 degrees so you can just easily move them around so my idea for this layout was that I'm just going to place the the input screw terminal here and I'm going to put the fuse right in between the two screws and here move the uh, the the power supply as close to these two as possible and also put the move up here maybe like this and then so the ESP can go you know roughly here the temperature sensor maybe I'm just going to rotate it like this and I have a resistor so where's my resistor yeah oops let's go back take this back so my resistor is going to go here and the cap is going to go somewhere there and you can see that based on your circuit diagram the the, the program already you know the, draws the line between the different components so even now even though that you haven't really connected all these pads you can see where the lines are going to go through and you know whether they are making a complete mess or whether you can you know just most probably work uh, around these different components and by the way when you start a new project in easy EDA I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some sort of user settings but it defaults to a two-layer board and and I think that's fine I mean you would most probably using the two-layer board because in terms of manufacturing and getting this uh, PCB manufactured two layer is usually the uh, you know the minimum that you start with so I don't think they even do one layer maybe they do but uh, two layer is definitely a good uh, place to start and if you need more layers then probably you should be watching a different video as well so I think the the placement of our components are fine now and we we should start um, wiring them together and again uh, what I would do here is that especially if you bought most of your components then you can just double check whether you uh, you pick the right package so again I would use the M button and then you know measure the distance between these two pads so it's 5.8 millimeters so you can check whether the the, the 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 screw terminal that you bought has the same pitch and also you can check the move so let's say that's you know 7.5 and um, and also you can check the I mean this HRK PM03 is, is quite a unique product so that's probably going to be fine but there must be you know a lot of different few in um, fuse holders as well so you can check whether that has the same pin pitch what uh, you have here on the package
because I can't imagine anything more painful than you know finishing all your components and then you know it goes to the manufacturing and once you receive it you realize that your components don't fit so we have done that and actually at this point we can even start wiring and wiring is also very very easy here on the top right you see the layer manager and we haven't touched it yet because we haven't actually started doing anything and you can see that you have um, if you don't hover over you basically have four layers and that's the top layer and the bottom layer so though that's the 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 layer on the top and the bottom where you have the different traces and you have a top silk layer and the bottom silk layer and that's the layer on top of your traces where you can draw on so all these yellow ones so basically the component outlines are going to go on the top silk layer there's nothing on the other side so if you want to write anything on the other side where you are going to sort you know the, the pins are going to stick through you will use the button silk layer the first thing we are going to do is we start wiring all the the pins or the pads together so for those we are going to use the top layer and the bottom layer as a matter of fact in easy eda there is an auto auto router function which would you know route all these pads or basically connect all these pads automatically i tried it a couple of times and it never worked i always got some message that the server is not available and i don't think we would be designing anything which we couldn't root uh, on our own so i think we should be you know learning how to root um, this design manually and i'm going to take a very easy approach because here in the in the settings menu you have the design rules and you can specify different rules for different type of um, um, uh, traces so you can specify what would be the track width the clearance and the uh, via diameter and the via drill diameter and um, I haven't used this to be honest maybe I should have so for example if you have traces that are for power let's say 5 volt or mains or ground you might want to use a thicker uh, line but for data traces you can use a thinner one so here you can define uh, uh, different rules for different line types and then when you have the lines you can just assign them to different rules so they automatically pick all these settings I haven't done any of those what I have done in most of, well, in my two designs that I have done, is I started designing the routes immediately. So you just pick up this first tool, and for example, you know that you want a line from here to here. So basically, you just connect the two together, and let me just zoom in. Now you can see that the blue line, that sort of helper line, has disappeared, and now you have a, a red line. And so that's the... Uh, the 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 power from the f uh, the fuse going to the power supply and we also need to connect this one so let me make it like this so there is no 90 degree turns in my trace and then that's it so now we have connected these two and if i click escape i keep you know um, i come out of this uh, uh, what is it track designer then I can click on the on the trace and as you can see I can change the layer if I want but really all I have done um, up until now is I usually just change the width so I know that this one um, conducts power so I would want to do it you know a lot more thicker but probably five is way too much I mean it's not going to carry a huge current because especially on the AC side it's going to be really really low but maybe I can use you know two millimeter thick and also maybe for this one I can do two millimeters as well and then uh, your tool is going to remember so the next line that you draw are going to be uh, the same width so maybe what I can do is I can sneak this past here on the move and do it like that and actually I'm not too happy about this because I think it's too close so I can just move the move around and then maybe you know modified if you think you have too too many turns you can delete a node and then make it like so and I, and I have to be honest I'm making most of these rules up as I go because you know I'm, I'm missing that knowledge of how you need to design a PCB and what are the design considerations that you should think about when you are you know doing the design so what I have just done, I've just moved this uh, fuse a little bit down, so this trace is a little bit further from this terminal, and I move this a little bit away from the 
the edge of the board because yeah maybe I shouldn't have a mains right at the edge of the board I'm guessing so now I have these terminals connected and now I need to connect them off across the you know the AC input of the of the power supply but I can't do it here because um, basically this uh, this trace is in a way but I can just do these two traces on the other side of the board so I just click over to the bottom layer and I do part the the trace again and I just connect the, sorry tick tick it's not a drag it just click click so I do this so I've done these two traces and maybe I move this a little bit down so it's further from the from the other trace and I can make this straight and these are on different layers so they you know this line and this line is always not going to touch so with this we have done with the uh, the mains side of the of the board so we can turn our attention to the uh, to the low voltage side and I think what I'm going to do is maybe I will use the bottom layer for for ground so just uh, I'm just going to connect everything which is ground so I have the ground output of the power supply going to the ground of this one and from here I can go here and then from here I can go up there so these are all the all the ground lines and again this is probably too much for ground so I can just reduce the, the track width to one millimeter maybe I can use 1.5 as well and as you can see I need 3.3 .3 volts here here but maybe what I can do is I can use the top layer for 3.3 .3 volts so I can just do like this and that and then from here I can oh I need to connect to here and I also need to connect these two pads but I think I'm going to sneak it around here okay so I just zoom in and probably just move these guys around so make it a little bit more pretty something like that if you make any mistakes here, uh, one at the end of the process when we generate the, the, the Gerber files, you will get some errors anyway. So, okay, so these are the 3.3 volt components. Oh, I need 3.3 volts here as well. So, maybe what I can do is I can just go up from here. Okay. I have some extra kink here. I don't think I need that, so I can delete that node. Move this out a little bit so it's... Um... Oh, actually, no. Let me go back. Okay. I use this extra node so it's not 90 degrees. Something like that. So that's all almost done we need the actual data line so this is what is it gpio 0 i think or gpio 2 going i know it's gpio 2 going up to the dht 22 and also bridging here for the pull up resistor and i can't do it on the bottom layer because this uh, blue trace is in the way so i'm just going to do it in the top layer i'm already in the top layer so that's fine so here um Actually, what I'm doing I'm going to do here, it's like that, and I can connect like this. And as you can see, all the blue helper lines have now disappeared. So in theory, I have connected everything together just right. Okay, so, and I think this should be it. And when you want to generate your Gerber files, so these are the files that you need to give to your PCB manufacturer. You, okay, I need to save first. Let me do that. Oh, yeah. Test PCB for YouTube. Save. 
So when you generate the Gerber files, uh, you can do this uh, check and if you have any errors, then you will have the errors listed here. The, uh, it doesn't give you a lot of hint, I mean that's, this is what I find, it doesn't give you a lot of um, help in terms of where the error is, but in most cases you can figure out. And once you are here, you can order the, your PCBs at JLCPCB because this uh, easy EDA is actually uh, something which uh, JLCPCB has done. But um, I just download the Gerber files here, and that's how I did the oops, and that's how I did the manufacturing with PCB way. So good. But since we have gotten this point, it means that our board is has passed all the checks and it looks good. And actually, that's that's almost it. So the one thing I usually do is I generate this 3D view. Uh, initially, I thought this 3D view is going to include the components, but uh, unfortunately it does not. So all you get is you get your board and then you can just turn it around and just you know visually inspect all the the layer sorry all the traces again just to make sure that you are right. I mean you probably have the the circuit diagram in your mind so you know that okay I have you know one side of the mains goes to the AC the other one goes also to the you know the AC side via a fuse so that's fine. I have the move over the AC as well, and then some of the other bits and pieces. Oh, ah, actually, we did, did we connect the, the ground? Oh yeah, we did connect the ground to the DHT22. So that's all fine, it's good. Actually, I could uh, do the manufacturing based on this. Oh, there's a little bit of kink. I can probably delete some of the nodes. But I also want to show you this, um, uh, I always refer to this as, um, ground plane but it's actually it's called a copper plane and what it means that instead of uh, in a couple of cases instead of uh, having traces uh, in the, in your layout you have just a big copper copper trace where all the the pins or the pads that need to be connected to are connected and all the other pads or the traces are um, basically excluded with a, with some sort of clearance and that's usually done with uh, ground, uh, I think at least ground, and, uh, and in some cases ground and VCC as well. And as far as I understood, this helps to reduce the, the noise of the circuit and also creates uh, like a low resistance path between these pads. So instead of having these lines to conduct, let's say 3.3 volt, if you have a big, you know, big copper plate, then the electrons, you know, travel easier or something like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. But again, you can leave the drawing as it is. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's make our board prettier by adding some text. And this is what I usually do as well. So if you click on any of the components, for example, you can replace the, um, the let's say, R1s with, uh, with the actual values. So the same with the C1, so that's 4.7 microfarad I think if I'm correct and you can't move the oh you can also move them around I thought you can't okay you can move them around there are some texts for example I can um, I can't change this PSU but you can change them in the in the layout so for example in the fuse it says fuse because I have changed the fuse here so the text but oops Oops, oops, no, 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 I don't want to do that. But besides that, what I can do is I can also place some additional text on the board. Uh, just make sure that you select the silk screen layer and then you just put text. So I can put four text here. So I want to name this to uh, ground. The other one is NC for not connected. And data and VCC and actually I want because I don't have that much space I'm just going to change them to one millimeter and what I found is that even if you have a text which is one millimeter high you can still read them on the on the PCB so I can just label these pins so if you are using something else then um, DHT22, you know which pin is VCC data and, and, uh, 
and grant. And if you want to add some additional text, for example, I don't have a lot of space here, but I can add some text on the back side. So that's now on the bottom silk layer. And I say, well, it's going to be blink. So I say blink sensor node. And I put it maybe somewhere here. Okay, so that goes to the bottom silk layer. Let me save the changes and let me generate the 3D view. Good. So now you can see our new labels have appeared here. We have the correct um, resistor and capacitor values as well. And if I flip the board around, you can see our text link sensor node. Wonderful. I really think I've done, oh sorry, well, of course, now you can generate your Gerber files as well, so it's going to include the new text, but we just talked about these uh, planes and the and the copper area, so I'm going to do that now. <clears throat> and before you do that, what you need to do, you need to specify all the paths that should be connected by with a copper plane. So I'm going to pick all the ground pins or the, all the ground pads, which is this one. And here in the net, you just have to like, I'm just going to give it a designation. Let's just say ground, ground. This one is ground. This one is ground. This one is ground. Okay. So that's done. So the next thing is that you have to, um, specify a copper area. So what I want to do is I want to specify this entire area. I'm just going to leave a um, little bit of room from the edge of the board. And again, I'm not really sure if the ground plane should go over the plus side of the power supply, but I'm just going to do that. And of course, I'm going to keep it away from the main side. Oh, okay. How do I modify the copper area? Oh, of course, I exit and then I click and I can just uh, correct this mistake that I've done here. Okay, so this is our new copper area. And as you can see, because it is, it is linked to the ground net, you can see that let me just zoom in. So for example, this pad is not part of the ground net. So there is a clearance around this pad and also all the, all the connections. But this one is part of the ground net. So you have these four, basically this cross shape, which is uh, connecting the, the copper area with the plane. And the same here, and the same here, and the same also here. So what we have done here is that we created this big copper area where all the, the pads that should be on the ground plane or the ground net are connected to it and everything else has a clearance around it. And the clearance is, um, is defined, just one sec, top layer, hey. So if you click on the edge of the copper area, you can see all the settings here, you can change the clearance. So if you want 0.5 millimeter, you can see that the distance between the, the, the pads and the tracks increase. Again, I'm guessing the, you know, the default value is fine. And uh, going back to the design rule, if you would create different rules, then they would uh, you can select them from here instead of picking them up, you know, changing them manually. But I would just, uh, you know, leave it on the default one, I guess. If you move any of your components around, you can always click on this rebuild copper area and actually you have to because otherwise you run into the issue that I ran into where I moved this around and the copper area was generated based on the old position of this uh, uh, resistor. So the pads and the, you know, the, the clearance of the copper area were in different places. So I'll just have to manually fix that. But otherwise, that's it. The thing is that if you want to generate your Gerber files, oh, sorry. You need to save it first. Generate Gerbers. Yeah. 
you will have some errors because now what we have here is that we have traces that are connecting all these lines and we also have the the copper area so obviously you only need one of them so what you can do is again you can click on the copper area and you can say none so it just well it doesn't show and now because we have this big copper area we don't need all these lines good so if you regenerate the errors they should go away and everything is fine now because these pads are connected with the copper area so that's what I have done in my design and actually what I have also done is I've created another copper area on the top layer which are uh, connecting all the VCC ones so the 3.31 pads so what I have done here is I again I selected all the the pins so this should be VCC uh, where is that VCC this guy should be on VCC this guy should be on VCC and here as well and then here okay and now I have to define a second copper area and actually I did it on top of these uh, the, the same one maybe I'm just going to draw it with a slight slight offset from the from the previous one so it's easier to see it and then pick it maybe I'm just go going to use the same outline here sorry you use the uh, the right mouse to move around okay so this is my second copper area and I click select and you change the net to VCC and then you rebuild and now you can see that the the pads that need to be connected are now connected so the clearance is not all the way through but you have a cross uh, you know through connecting the what is it the pad with the copper area so you can see here and then here here and there as well and now what we all what we need to do is I'm just changing this to none because just like before save if I generate the Gerbers then we got errors again so I can just delete all my lines that are related to VCC if I generate the errors again or, or you know revalidate the errors again now they are gone so everything is fine now and just to not make the same mistake that I have done let's turn it back to solid review the copper area turn this back to solid rebuild the copper area okay and now we should be ready so I just generate the 3d view again oh sorry I need to save again 3d view I said 3d view we can see that's the that's the plane the copper area of connecting all the ground so this this and that pin and all the other pins are excluded and also this data line is uh, excluded from this copper plane there is a nice clearance all the way through and if we flip the board around then it's the opposite thing so it's the plus here plus the two pins here and here that are connected oh, sorry I shouldn't have done that yeah again right click allows you to pan the view and then left click rotates so you can see the how some of the, pad, the pads are included in the copper areas and others are not and well these are all the tools that I've used in my two initial PCBs and um, honestly I think that's that's pretty much what you need and if you want to do something basic like like this where you're just basically you know throwing a couple of components together so you don't have to work on a prototyping board that's all the knowledge that you need and now we can generate the Gerber files let's do the validations again generate Gerber so you get your Gerber files and then you can because I'm doing it with PCBWA I'm going to show you how it's done with the PCBWA 
So you just head on to PCB Way and you say that your boards is what is was I think it was 62 by 48. Let's say you need only five of them. It's two layer and you leave the thickness to 1.6 millimeters. So basically you just leave it to default. You click on go, uh, get quote. You have to take this one. Um, I have to admit I don't really understand what this is. It's basically some sort of surface finish. But I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty much fine with this surface finish. Uh, two layers. The material is this. I'm absolutely fine with that. With is that. If you, you know, these are the default settings. If you want anything different, if you want thinner board, thicker board, that's, that's going to cost you extra. If you want different uh, colors of the solder marks, that's going to cost you more. If you want to have the extra charge, you know, just go ahead to change these settings around. But I've been leaving all these settings on default. And you just click on calculate. So it's going to be, you know, five dollars uh, without the shipping. So you can change the shipping. Uh, uh, the default is always going to be DHL. So you can go back to all the way down to China Post. So that's just going to be a five. Uh, yeah, I guess China Post is the same. So basically, you can have five of these boards uh, for for five and five dollar shipping. So a ten all together. So you click to add to cart. Now you have these items in your cart, but that's only the the order. So you haven't included the design yet. And you just click here to add file, and you say add Gerber file. You just find the one that you have just downloaded, and once it has uploaded, you just key, click on submit order now. And what is happening now is um, you have just close this one you have submitted this order but what is uh, what is happening now is this your design is going to go for an audit so you can see here it says a subject to audit and that means that I don't know whether it's a person or some sort of computer but they are going to check your design just to make sure that there is nothing on your design that they wouldn't be able to manufacture um, I have no idea what they are checking here all that happened with me is that in a couple of hours I will get an email address to the to the email that I use for the registration, which says that uh, the the audit has been complete and I can order my design. And basically, you just come back here. Um, this will all this will say the subject to audit is going to change to uh, I don't know confirmed or something, and you can proceed to check out and you can you know pay for pay, pay for your order and and then that's it. And after that, you just wait. You will get a couple of email notifications that your uh, design is in production or your design is shipped and then you will uh, receive your design. As you can see it says the build time is usually one to two days and, and it's definitely one to two days. Because PCB they sponsored my videos they all came, came via DHL and literally I got my boards within a week from you know submitting the design. But that's it. That's the overall process and this is what I have learned so far about PCB manufacturing and designing a PCB using Easy EDA. You see two thumbnails on the screen now that will take you to my videos about the two PCBs that I have designed so far. Otherwise, you can click on my lovely face and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. But otherwise, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.